Good morning. You're listening to the Fort Bliss program, and I am Marie Gifkins, and we've got a wonderful program for you today. It's about wonderful things. And so let's start with, what should we start with? Let's start again. <laughs> let's, well, it's winter, and we need to look after ourselves. So we're talking about soups. Soups are always wonderful at this time of the year. And how do we look after ourselves? By putting some garlic in the soup. That's always good for the immune system, isn't it? And onions, that's always a good stable part of our diet. And um, lots of liquid, because we need the fluid to go through the body and to flush out all the things that we don't want. We need the fluid. And there's always usually a little pinch of salt in there and a bit of pepper and some carrots. And as we know, the carrots are good for our eyesight. It's actually scientifically proven now that the beta carotenes are excellent for our eyes and lots of other things, our skin. And we got usually we have some parsnips in our soup, don't we? And the parsnips are good for our lungs. So that's always good to know because parsnips kind of have that odd taste that, you know, you sort of, oh, I think I'm supposed to eat them, they're supposed to be good for me, but we don't know why, but now you do. So they're good for the lungs. And what else do we put in? Uh, parsnip. Sometimes we put in a bit of parsnip. Uh, no, I just talked about that. I'll try that one again. Um, uh, yeah. And usually we put a little bit of meat in, and it's normally bones of something. So we've got the marrow from the bones. There's a lot of talk at the moment about the marrow and all the good things that are in the marrow. So that's always good and um, swede, sometimes we put a bit of swede in and that's good, that's got good potassium and lots of other good things for our body as well. So what else do we do in the winter time? We try and keep warm, try and stay out, or don't get too damp because that can kill, cause chills and you know if we do get a bit of a chill in our kidneys or in our neck the easiest thing to do is actually get a hair dryer, a blow wave, and just put the blow wave on your neck, not too close of course, or on your back and your kidneys. That's always a nice easy way to try and dull that chill because we don't want to feel miserable for a couple of days. There's lots of other things that we can do if we're starting to get a little bit sick. You've probably heard me before on the show and I do hope you've got your pen and paper because let's talk about onion poulticing. So as I said, onions are always good for the soup. They're also fantastic for mucus congestion. So if you've got mucus congestion in your lungs, uh, in your sinuses, you know, you've got a bit of a head cold, even congestion around the kidneys, then the onions on your feet are ideal. So how do you do that? You get an average size onion and you chop it up, not too big, not too small, and you get an old face cloth, two old fa face cloths because you've got two feet. Now you dampen the face cloth and then you put half of the onion on half of the cloth and then you fold it in half. So it's like a sandwich and you've got the onion in the middle. And then you can warm it in the microwave if it's pretty cold. You don't want it cooked, you don't want hot onions and you don't want cold onions either. So just that few seconds in there. And then you have glad wrap as well, and the glad wrap goes on the bottom, and then the sandwich with the onion in the middle with the cloth, and then you put your foot on top, and then you wrap the glad wrap over the foot and over the toes and on the other side, and then you put a nice woolen sock over top. So you do that to both feet, and you leave it on for one hour, two hours if your lungs are really congested. So what happens is the body creates a little natural fever and it actually starts pulling all the mucus from the lungs and it just goes into the bowels and gone the next day. If it's in the sinuses, you will start to feel it dripping and sort of coming away from the sinus area. It's, it's such a weird feeling, feeling, especially if you're caked in in the sinuses and some people are like concrete in there. And it can take a day or two to loosen it all up. So quite often I'll tell people to do it for three days in a row and then you just wash the cloth, get rid of the onions, don't use them again, they're not good for anything. And so the onions will create that natural fever and pull and start pulling all the mucus. Best thing I know, 
And the cheapest thing I know of putting that congestion through and breaking it down. So that's the onion poulticing. You can also, if you've got a cough, a persistent cough, you can cut an onion in half and put it in your bedroom for night time. The fumes from the onion goes in and seems to soothe the lining of the throat a bit and calm the coughing down. Or you can make a wonderful cough mixture, which is very cheap again. Most of the, and I probably shouldn't be saying this and I might get into trouble, but most of the cough mixtures do nothing. And you think maybe I've brought the wrong one, so you go and buy another different one and it still doesn't do anything for you. So what I do for, if I need a cough mixture, and sometimes we can just get that tickly throat and you just keep coughing and it's the end of a cold. Um, so you cut up an onion again and put it in a big cup and then you put a heaped tablespoon of honey, beautiful honey on top. And then you put some tin foil over the top and just let it sit on the bench for half a day or overnight. And then when you're ready, you strain it, strain the juice off it, and that's the juice that you take. So it's one teaspoon as often as you like. And it doesn't taste too bad at all. It's, yeah, you can taste a little bit of onion, but it's mostly honey that you can taste. And it's quite liquidy. It's not uh, thick like honey. So that's the cheapest thing. And you just put it in the fridge and take it out when you need it. And, you know, at least have one teaspoon a day, but if... If you're at like night time before bed, take another teaspoon. And if you have a coughing fit, just go and grab it and put a teaspoon. Lead, and you can feel it coating the throat as it goes down. So that's another wonderful tip with an onion. It's amazing what you can do with an onion. And um, you can have ginger in a bath if you've got a bath at your place. Uh, and you're not feeling, you know, you've got a bit of flu going on three good heap teaspoons of ginger, ground ginger, and a bath, that's really nice as well. And if you're gonna have a bath, you might as well chuck some Himalayan salt in there as well. Now the Himalayan salt is the pink salt, and you can put like half a kilo, and you put up to a kilo in a bath. And what happens is you've got a whole lot of minerals in that Himalayan salt, natural minerals. Minerals go in through the skin, and the toxins come out. So it's a good way to top up and let go of anything you don't want. And then just pull the plug and away it goes. Don't let anybody come in after you into the bath. They'll hop into your toxins. Not so good. <laughs> so that's another way of topping up. Now if you would like to ring me um, and have a, make an appointment or have a chat or run something past me, my number is 27 so it's 27 Now I have a clinic here in Hastings and right at the back of Countdown in the last Palms building and I'm here on a Tuesday, Wednesday and a Thursday and I'm in Waipakarau on a Monday and Friday. So spread the word. <laughs> and uh, so I've been working with people for about 23 years and I enjoy it. Um, I still haven't got sick of it. And I do specialise in the feet, and hence why the program is called Foot Bliss. But I do do lots of other things as well. So we might just have a little chat about feet. So, and it is interesting working on feet for 23 years. You do get to know quite a lot about feet and and how hard you should work or not work on the person. Uh, you do have um, standard practice where you go through a certain procedure with the feet. So it is working on the structure of the feet. It's not a massage. It's not acupressure points. It's, it's actually working on the bone structure of the feet. And so it's helping to realign the bones in the feet and bring them back into its more correct position. So a bit like when you're working on bunions and realigning them, uh, plantar fasciitis, which is quite painful. It's every step you take, it's painful in the feet, either one foot or both. And then there are things like flat foot and high arches, there's twisted toes, hammer toes, there's toes that cross over toes. There's all sorts of things that can go amiss. Or you could have twisted your ankles in sports or shoes or 
even a rabbit hole and you've twisted your ankle and it's never come right and it's giving you a bit of grief now. Uh, it, it's quite often something that's just out in the foot, possibly uh, a bone called a cuboid which is near the ankle and if that's out then after a while it can also cause trouble into the knee and then you go to the doctor and because you, you're more worried about your knee and then he says well you might be up for a knee operation we'll have to put you on the waiting list and you know why they call it a waiting list don't you because you have to wait and wait and then you might get a letter oh no we found more uh, people that are worse off than you we need to take you off the list for a while and it's like this is very frustrating and I and I hear it quite a lot and they do wonderful jobs um, with the operations but there can be such a waiting list you know but sometimes it's just the bone in the foot is sitting in the wrong place and then you're not standing correctly and then that affects the knee now wouldn't that be a nice easy answer oh my gosh instead of having a knee operation it would be so cool to work on people before they got into the hospital and just see how many we could actually reduce and get them right. I mean, nobody wants an operation if they don't need one. They don't have to have it. You know, I don't think I know anybody that would go, yes, yes, choose me, choose me, I want one. <laughs> uh, so sometimes there's very easy answers. And uh, sometimes it can feel like it's complicated. You know, I did, I'll give you an example. Three weeks ago, I had a lady come to me in Waipakarau and she was only in her mid 40s. And, um, oh, she's got it plastered all over her Facebook, so I know she won't mind me talking about it. <laughs> and, uh, and she came in and she hobbled in and she was in a lot of pain. And she was trying to work and she just had so much pain in her calf muscles plus down either side of the Achilles, which is quite unusual. Normally it's like your Achilles is giving you trouble and your calf muscles. But So it was a little bit different and she was in so much pain it was keeping her awake. It would wake her six, seven times at night time. And sometimes it would be like pulling in the calf muscle, a pulsating sort of feeling as well as pain, as well as burning. And sometimes the beside either, beside the the Achilles, either side of the Achilles, was giving her grief as well. And it was on both legs, and she'd had no injury, and she'd had x-rays, and she'd had scans, and blood tests, and nothing showing anywhere. Nothing in the bloods, nothing in... How many of you heard that? There's nothing showing in your blood. There's nothing in the scans. Oh, we don't know. We'll, we'll give you some painkillers. We'll give you some anti-inflammatories, and come back and see if it's still there in a couple of months and so she was in she was getting on some really nasty painkillers and and drugs and um, she wasn't happy and she was having to take time off work because of all the pain in her legs and um, and she was also um, sometimes when she was at work she was trying to talk to people and all she wanted to do was burst into tears and cry because of the pain in her legs so it's not very nice when you're in any kind of situation like that and especially when you don't know what's wrong nobody's got an answer for you they don't know what's happening they look at you and you think no it's not in my head i know it's not in my head <laughs> and she's been suffering for six months and so she was really hobbling when she came in and so I heard her story and um, i said okay hop on my table on the massage table and I proceeded with placing three essential oils on her calf muscles and leg. So I put one on first, very light, I didn't massage it in. Just touching her was enough to give her pain. And I, it was oregano, and then I put tea tree on, and which is another essential oil. And then I put thieves on, which is another essential oil. That one's a mixture, I think I talked about that in the last program. And um, so just put those three essential oils on and then I waited for about 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. So I just talked to her and we were talking about different things. And then I said to her, look, these oils that I've put on you, they're not pain relief. It's not for painkiller. It's not anti-inflammatory. It's to fight, fight viruses and bacteria. And that's all they do. 
And she's kind of like looking at me like, what? <laughs> and I said, look, if it's any better with putting these three things on, then we know what we're dealing with. And she goes, okay. And I said, no, once we know what we're dealing with, that's half the battle. It's when you don't know what you're doing, dealing with, that's, it's all a mystery and it's all, it can play games with your mind because you wonder if it's this or wonder if it's that or is anyone ever going to be able to know, is this my lot for the rest of my life? There's, things roll around your head, you know, and you try not to. And um, so after 20 minutes, I got her up off the table. I said, now just sit on the edge of the table. So she wriggled around and she sat on the table and she had her legs dangling over the massage table. And she's like, and I'm looking at her and I'm thinking now, it should be reduced. Okay, it's not all gone, but it should be reduced. And I'm looking at her and she goes, oh my gosh, Marie, there's no pain. There's no pain on either of my legs. And I, went, I looked at her and I went, really? <laughs> and... She goes, no, nothing. And she's like, got big eyes. And then I said, okay, put your feet on the ground and put a bit of pressure there, a bit of weight. So she put her feet on the ground and she lifted one foot, put a foot down, put, lifted the other foot, put a foot down. And she goes, there's no, there's no pain. And she's looking at me like, what magic have you done in 20 minutes? I've been in pain for six months. And I said, well, okay, so we know what we're dealing with now. We're dealing with viruses and bacteria, and probably, most probably viruses. And, um, and then I said to her, now get up and walk. And she did, she got up and she walked like she'd been in pain for six months, very gingerly on her feet. And she turned around and then she said to me, I've only got one little bit of pain on my Achilles. And then she burst into tears and she cried. She cried from the relief of being in pain for six months and it's gone. And so we had a bit of a hug and she, she just looked at me like, I can't believe this. And I was looking at her like, I can't believe this either. Um, because that even seemed like a miracle to me after six months of being in pain. For it all to be gone in 20 minutes was like a miracle. Uh, yes, reduced, I expected it to be reduced. So sometimes... Not every time, but you know, quite often you can get better. And it doesn't have to take forever. 20 minutes, and it was only three essential oils. And so she says, what did you put on me again? And where do I get them from? <laughs> and it was $42 for the three essential oils. It's not even expensive. Not for three lots of things. And a little bit of a change of diet because we need to starve the viruses. So I believe that the viruses were in the tissue in the calves and around the Achilles. And so we're dealing with the um, viruses and changing your diet to starve the virus rather than feeding it. And, and, and I said, right, I want to see you in two weeks' time. I'm not going to do anything else to your feet. We need to get the inflammation down. We need to get the pain reduced. And then we'll go from there and we'll see how you're walking and what's left. So I saw her the other day. She came in and I didn't even recognise her. And I'm like looking at her and thinking, who are you? <laughs> and then she started to talk and I realised it was the same lady. She looked 15 years younger. She says, oh my gosh, Marie, I'm sleeping. I'm walking. I'm talking normal. <laughs> Only occasionally I've got a little bit of pain and that's because I've been working all day and walking everywhere. And, um, and she says, I even want to live now. I even want to hang out with my girlfriends. She says, you've given me my life back. And uh, so she was so grateful and I was so wrapped. And she changed her diet and, and so she was on a mission now. She knew what she needed to do and she had a plan and it was all working and she's a very happy lady. So you know, sometimes it can be really easy. And that was on a Friday, and then on the Tuesday when I was in Hastings, I had another lady come to see me. She was um, getting up there with age, in her 70s, and she came in with a walking stick, and she didn't look well, and she was hobbling, and she had very sore knees. And there was some swelling in her legs and her feet looked like there was some issues there as well. 
and she'd explained to me that she had had a fall two years previous and within a six weeks her knees started to ache and then they started to get worse and um, and then of course she went to the doctor after a while and they did some x-rays and said oh no you've you've got arthritis and you're going to need knee operations and she'd already had two hips done so she didn't want any more operations and she goes oh I'll just see and I gave a talk at a a group uh, 60s up um, a few weeks ago and then she goes right I'm going to go and see this lady and so she came in and as she's telling me I could see that her pain was in her knees but they were pulsating pains and there was a little bit of burning and slightly different on both knees but I thought no there's something else amiss there is structural stuff going on but there's still something else so I put some essential oils on her knees and we carried I carried on taking the details and what else was happening with her and then after 15 minutes I said to her how's your knees by the way she goes heaps better there's no pain in them there's no pulsating one has a little bit but nothing like when I came in what did you do <laughs> so I explained to her I put this essential oil on her that kills viruses that's all it does it's not a pain relief I said, it might be a good idea to put that on every day and just reduce this pain and then see what we have left. So again, I saw her today and um, she's walking faster, she's walking better, she's feeling better, she's sleeping better. She said she, there's still a little bit of pain but only on one knee now and she's just so much better. And she's like, like, oh, it was the best thing I did coming to see you. You know, if you're suffering, you know, why don't you just make an appointment and come and see me and run things past me. I do things a little bit different to the doctor. I don't give out medications. Um, sometimes I use essential oils or herbs. And, you know, look at it from a different sort of point of view. You know, we all need each other. And the doctors are wonderful. Uh, but if you're a bit frustrated and you're a bit lost or they don't know what's happening with you, they can't quite explain it, you know, it doesn't hurt to get a second opinion. So if you would like to ring me and have a chat, my number is 027 249 5090. Thank you for listening.